advantageous to actually go to a conference in your specialty area. So if you're dealing with mathematics, then you go to conferences that have mathematics sessions or breakout sessions or literature, language, or writing, um, so, or technology, for, um, for that matter, so that you can focus more in on your area. And then, of course, if you're in administration, you want to um, work on those. And they also have, um, mainly when you go to these conferences, they will have what's called a morning plenary session for those out, uh, out there who um, have never attended. And so just thinking about the structure of it, a morning plenary session is just essentially everyone that comes to the conference attends and here's this one particular speaker. And generally that first speaker is someone who is going to motivate and set the tone for what the conference is going to be about. And then the educators will break out and go to different sessions based on you know, what they are particularly interested in or their specialty areas. And then they may come back together for a lunch and keynote speaker um, so that everyone has, you know, most of these conferences have an overall theme. Um, everyone has some um, some kind of unity within the conference because you have that morning plenary together. You break out and you find, you know, people that you can kind of connect with and use as resources. Uh, and then you come back together at a luncheon and then you hear another keynote speaker on maybe whatever the latest trends are, something that everyone needs to know. But, you know, conferences don't have to be that large. You know, there are conferences that only have like 30, session or 30 sessions or 15 sessions. It just kind of depends on exactly what you are looking for and what your comfort level is. Again, they have uh, education conferences on the future of education and technology. But um, I have been talking quite a bit about um, educational conferences and professional development. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take a brief pause and listen to a word from our sponsors. But we'll be back in just a moment. Right now, you might be struggling through your classes or even failing them. You might be worried that you may not finish high school. There might have even been a thought that you may not be smart enough. Well, the New Heights Educational Group begs to differ. We not only think you are smart enough, but with our help, you will complete your high school diploma. The New Heights Educational Group strives to improve your academic success through its tutoring services. To learn more, please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group educational resources to help reach your goals. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video-based, self-paced, teacher-supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. Welcome back. I'm your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Educational Group, the New Heights Show on Education. And tonight's topic is educational conferences and professional development. And before the break, uh, I was talking about the various levels or um, types of professional development conferences that are available to our educators and why they actually uh, go to these conferences and what's important about them going to the conferences that they go to. And I also mentioned that, you know, there are very specific conferences that are related to uh, specialty areas and they have conferences regarding the future of um, education technology conferences where, you know, they collaborate with, of course, new persons who are bringing out new technologies and the best practices and any pressing issues that may be coming up within that professional um, area from around the world. And so teachers can have an opportunity to choose to stay in their state or go to a, a local or state um, continual education classes or conferences and or choose to go to uh, a regional or national level conference where they can meet with other educators from 
other states. And they also have uh, conferences where uh, educators can, you know, at these joint mathematics, you know, STEM education is definitely on the rise and they have conferences that work regarding the innovation in mathematical research and the advance of mathematical advancement and providing um, communication tools um, to progress through the field and, and encouraging mathematical research and um, students to kind of tap into that area. And also um, just the technology landscape um, and bringing you know, leading companies together. And I know we talked about that on a previous STEM education show where they they actually bring in companies and, you know, new um, ed tech startups and ideas. And they have these large number of attendees from people all over the globe. And so they do a superb job of bringing professional development and networking opportunities for the K through 12 area. And then there are some that um, specifically target the K through eight. Uh, and then you can have those that focus on the high school area from nine through 12. Um, but they also focus in on, you know, a comprehensive literacy and reading recovery um, for students. In addition to um, teachers classroom intervention uh, and maybe working with students with special needs or ESL or instructional coaches, um, professional, um, I think they're called program specialists um, and in schools now, which is something that's a new concept for me, um, program specialists in, in a high school. But we can see that um, education is changing in so many ways that they also not only have things in those specialty areas, but they also have um, conferences that kind of work on uh, equity and, innov and innovation and cost-effective models for teaching education um, within the new fields of, you know, uh, the virtual schools and how can um, that be um, better managed economically or, you know, the bottom line of education, you know, their dollars and cents, you know, in order to implement anything, there's going to be a cost associated with it. But also looking at, you know, and discussing the future of schools and, you know, the directors or teachers or program specialists or administrators, however you want to uh, name them. And I know with the invention of charter schools and you now we have more virtual schools and home schools. So the actual terms may be different, but the function uh, that they, uh, the ways that they function within the schools is essentially the same. And so we have these conferences um, to kind of opening the minds of educators and professionals uh, on the ones who are caring for our young children and gathering all this information where they can sit side by side with other educators and explore um school leadership and independent um, programs or community-based interests that can, you know, drive innovation and transform, transform learning for our students in a very changing time because we know these digital technologies are a very real thing. And we talked about that on one of our previous shows, but we see now that we didn't know at the time when we had that particular show that we were going to go through this COVID-19 um, pandemic across the world and that virtual education would be thrusted upon us whether we were ready for it or not. And so now um, this is a time where if teachers had taken advantage um, uh, in the past, and which I'm sure they did within their school systems because digital technology is on such a rise, but they have these new and innovative ways. And if they've implemented those, then they have some type of a framework in order to work with our students and focus on the how students can, you know, enhance their educational experience through these networks um, and utilize that sometimes, you know, forced situations like these bring about very ingenious and innovative ways of using technology and thinking critically 
about the principle and our focus and our mission for for our schools and what techniques are we currently using and how can we streamline this in a virtual setting in order to um, enhance the presentation of, you know, our communication for our students and our parents and making it accessible um, to our students. And so some of these conferences focus in on, on that as well, the accessibility of you know, our technologies and how we can enhance the curriculum, but also engage the students in um, something that's going to be productive and also um, teach equity. equity. <laughs> I don't know why I can't say that word tonight. Um, you know, work together in a more diversified way um, to enhance the students' um, knowledge and also provide them with... Um, a way to teachers and administrators, a way to understand um, more about policy issues that affect um, them on a state, national, and local level, and how that um, can sometimes impact um, different things within the schools. And looking at culturally how schools can be um, more um, sensitive to the cultural diversities that students face. So you know, with these conferences, they can go and learn about uh, more about students with learning disabilities and how um, they can creatively um, um, integrate certain things within the, the classroom in order to better aid those students within that particular um, area and also um, being more mindful of their relationship with the students you know, keeping in mind this is a student-centered approach and looking at emerging technologies and emerging ways in which we can explore uh, a common ground, and, but still empower and engage our students and our teachers um, to develop learning and teaching skills that are going to aid the students in the future. And so, and thinking about... Um, Again, educational conferences and professional development workshops that our teachers um, actually attend, uh, whether it's in early childhood and learning, you know, connecting practices and policy and research, or whether it's, you know, learning about crisis management and protocol on better safety and security methods, or working with, um, you know, at risk youth, or dealing with, um, brain-based learning or building academic vocabulary or character education, student monitoring, or, I mean, student mentoring, or spe special education. These diverse groups and these diverse conferences that put these on, and you could it could go from one day to two days to four-day conference or week conference. But all of these things are very important, you know, just like... Um, Anything else that you do, if, if you don't continue to um, learn what the new trends are or uh, foresee what may be coming in the future and gain key insights on what's going on around the world and how can you genuinely influence the classroom experience and uh, work with our students on what are the best practices to get you the knowledge, skills, and learning that you need in order to build a productive, fruitful um, future for yourself. So that's what we're trying to, we're trying as educators to explore ways to um, make this learning experience um, one that can be impactful for their future um, and also collaborate with other professionals across disciplines to solve problems that will be new um and build a, a stronger foundation for a better education in K through 12. And so I hope that um, you have learned something about uh, why there is an importance and a need for educational conferences for our professional development, for our teachers and our administrators, and the premise that you know education is a national priority um, and a state's responsibility. And that that 
is taken from the Reagan Institute Summit that happens every year in Washington, D.C. And again, it says that the focus um, 